Now, how do you sell? Tonight, road safety ads. We start with a hint of nostalgia. This is how they used to do it back in the 1940s. Boy, he was lucky. Particularly lucky. Look who's coming to pick him up. Hey, aren't you John Bradman? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that a real hit? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Now listen, boys, you know I like playing cricket as well as you do. But if you want to play for Australia, there's something you must not do. What's that? Practice on the road. The park's the place for that. You know, Don made 300 against those kids in that backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Every year in Australia, there's 600,000 reported crashes, 200,000 injuries and 1,600 road deaths. Road safety advertising is a serious business. Todd, when you get an account like this, where do you start? The first thing we do is get a history reel, which is the last 20 years of advertising for road safety for this particular uh, uh, state. And I sat there, I've been warned, I was warned not to do this, but I sat there for 95 minutes and looked at variations on death, injury, sadness and sorrow and the second thing I needed to do was book a psychiatrist uh, because not only was I uh, slightly depressed for a week and they had warned us not to do this but I was also paranoid driving. Taking on a, a, a road safety campaign for an agency is a big important responsibility. Not easy. In that context it must be bad. So let's look at the kinds of strategies safety ads use to affect our behaviour. We'll start with the best known tactic, shock. And yes, if you have a sensitive disposition, that's a warning. All right, Dan, before we get to what it's about, I mean, how do you make an ad like that? I mean, that's a real crash, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, the best way to make a stunt look real is to do it for real. So when you see a stuntman come crashing through a window, that's real glass. And what we do is we, we put a small explosive charge on the glass, and just before impact, the glass explodes and the guy comes through. The same with that. You know, you want to make a combi look like it's crashing into a truck, you crash a combi into a truck. But, I mean, uh, that adds about so much more than shock. You know, I th you, you look at moments where, you know, the girlfriend who wakes just before the impact, yeah. you know, and the truck driver slump after the impact, that adds about emotion as much as it is about shock. In New Zealand a couple of years ago, an agency came up with poster ads that they tucked under the windscreen wipers of cars parked around primary schools. So when you got into the driving seat, this is what you saw. Now, that's extremely confronting to me. Uh, Bridget, did that get a lot of attention in New Zealand at the time? I think it did get a lot of attention, but the really interesting thing about this is actually how it came about. And what happened was uh, police had a look at when most speeding tickets were handed out. And what they actually found was the highest percentage of speeding tickets were handed out first thing in the morning and around mid-afternoon. And on closer inspection, they found that most of the people getting those tickets were either parents rushing to school to drop the kids off or rushing in the afternoon to pick them up. So imagine you're at work, ah, you're running late for a meeting, you jump in your car, plant the foot, get to school, wicked, run in, grab little Johnny, come out and bang, you're hit in the face with the consequences of your actions. Russell, you're, you're a father. What if you'd been in a car and your kids had seen that? Yeah, I don't really like it, to be honest. I, I, I mean, I've got a really practical problem with it. I think it would be. I think you would take it off the windscreen before you actually had the impact of it, because when you walk up to your car and there's something across where you're about to drive, you just take it off. You think it's a flyer for the local disco. Um, I, I just. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since you've been to a disco. <laughs> 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 uh, this would, this would, this must be a flyer for the local disco. <laughs> I hope they still play Roll Out the Barrel. <laughs> I, I, I like it. I, I think most kids, most kids nowadays have, you know, probably killed, dismembered and chainsawed 50 people before lunchtime in video games. Yeah. Uh, so if my kids saw that, I would actually uh, just talk about road safety. I'd use it as an opportunity to talk about it. A squashed brain on a, on a windscreen is not that shocking anymore to young children. I don't find it all that shocking. I'm not sure I would have approved it, though. And I, and the reason I wouldn't have approved it is I think kids seeing that image is probably more likely to piss mothers off yeah. than to have them reevaluate their perceptions. Yeah. And I think when you're trying to slow people down in the school zone, the, the last thing you want to do is make the chick behind the wheel of the Land Cruiser cranky. <laughs> um, 
The sister of the shock ad, usually set soon after, is the grief ad. This ad, which uses real photos and real families, was launched in Victoria this year. The first version that ran was three minutes long and aired simultaneously on all three commercial television channels during prime time. Russell, why would you do that? That's called a roadblock, Will. Um, and the reason why it's called a roadblock is you basically capture every single person that's watching the telly. So therefore it's about capturing the audience um, and it's about giving them, giving them something new to look at in this space. Um, maybe it's now because I'm older, I'm a parent and I look at those parents and you can absolutely relate to it. I particularly like the 1968 photo. You know, the idea that yeah. that's still hurting 40 years down the track, it's still painful, I think um, really is wonderful. The two things I like about it is the, the long silences where nothing's happening mm. in the ad. There's no voiceover, there's no government telling you what to do, mm. there's no orders in it. It's just. Yeah. pauses that are really uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. And the second thing I like is they address a major issue in road, road safety. It's been an issue for a, lo a long time, and that's the notion of statistics. If one person dies, it's a tragedy. If thousands die, it's a statistic. Mm. And by making it real, and you, we talked about using real people in other episodes, and you know, companies sort of painting it on to give them credibility. That was, act, that was real people. That, they were their and lives. You brave, felt their sorrow. Yeah. Amazing, amazingly brave of these people to do this. Yeah. Do ad, ad agencies like getting this sort of work? <laughs> ad agencies love this kind of work and you hate this kind of work. You love it because you get to make an ad that can make a difference. Um, it's kind of the work that's good for your soul. Mm. Yeah. I, that's what I call it because we spend so much time kind of flogging whatever, you know, stuff, guff. Um, we hate it because in order for this to work, we have to come up with a message that will engage people and get them to listen to us, and then we can make a difference. But the slogan at the end about being photographed mm. and the idea of the ad being pictures, mm. is it to combat like people who just go, oh, speed cameras are just revenue raising mm. and that sort of thing? Is that what they're it is. partly doing here? Yeah. It's a massive it issue you just touched upon, issue, because yeah. one could argue that our distrust of government is killing lots of people on the roads. Because we don't, because we are so, you know, they, 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 they could actually put speed cameras on every corner. They could increase the booze buses and put a lot more police. And we know, fact, that 90% of people slow down around speed cameras. The reason they don't do it, because it's unpopular. Because people view fixed speed cameras as revenue raising. It's a massive issue. Yeah, I actually think it's, it's part of what I was saying earlier. You need to mix up the messages. You need to go shocking. You need to go emotional. And, and people learn in different ways. Some people are visual, some people are kinesthetic, some people are emotional. It's about touching people in different ways. And, and you know, to Todd's point, you know, you're not going to get all of the hoons, but if there, there's a hoon that's slightly emotional in nature, that's his ad. The other tactic of road safety ads is to focus on the consequences. Do the wrong thing, you'll pay the price. Here's an ad that caused a lot of fuss when it ran in Victoria. When I was in prison, I got uh, slashed in the face. My ears cut off. I had a claw hammer put from my brain just here. Cutthroat razors. Here. Here. Eight and a half inch butcher's knife. There. Ice pick. There. Ice pick up the back there. If you drink and you drive, and you're unfortunate enough to hit somebody, you want to pray to God you don't ever go to prison. All right, Todd, is the fear of getting caught uh, bigger than the fear of dying? Well, research now shows that the fear of dying is very low. 
on, on the kind of motivational things for road safety. Uh, that, and fear of detection is also quite low. But fear of the consequences is quite powerful. Uh, and that is, you'll lose your car, you lose your license, you'll end up in jail. So consequences is a really good area to go into. The other thing this ad does, of course, we, we've talked before, the, the first hurdle you've got to jump is actually getting people to watch. Mm. Uh, and over time, this style of advertising, the remote, the remote control does get used because you know it's going to come. So I think this would have had a, what did have an, a fantastic immediate arresting impact. Mm. Hang on a second. Yeah. What's this guy <laughs> selling? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm going to buy whatever chopper sells me or he'll kill me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Chopper Reed was not the first choice of the agency behind it. They approached Charles Manson to appear in it, but started getting disturbing letters from Manson's supporters and changed their minds. Who knew he hung with a bad crowd? <laughs> Probably the most interesting road safety ad of recent times is this New South Wales one. an ad that finds a new way to tackle the problem. Uh, Dan, what's the strategy going on here? Look, I love this ad. I mean, clearly they're targeting young guys. And the problem is you can't shock young guys because they think they're bulletproof. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when you're a young guy and you're out with a group of guys and the driver's speeding, the one thing you can't say is slow down. If you tell the guy to slow down, you might as well pull on a skirt and criticise the condition of his fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> what this does is it gives young guys a way to say slow down without losing face. So it redir redirects peer pressure. I think it's great. Again, I, this is a great example of what, what great advertisers are in this space. I mean, if you, if you think that um, you turn up with a script and what we're going to do is we're going to run a campaign about speeding and we're going to relate it to, you know, the size of the driver's appendage, to actually, to actually buy that and do that that, that's, a, that's a fantastic thing for them to have done. It's a big call, yeah. though. Yeah. I, I, I want it to work. I'm not certain how it'll go in the, in the long term. Uh, because, you know, most people know for young people, speeding is about uh, their identity. Speeding's a good thing. It's a skill. It's, and, and for most of these people, the, when they get in the car, it's time where they're in control. And they exercise that control and drive crazy. And, and to notion, I think it's brave for them to say, we're yeah. going to make it socially unacceptable. Yeah. I reckon they should do a sequel to that ad where, you know, people are driving, like, really slowly and safely and the grandma's just there going, 